When you look at performances in the NBA, you have some that are so masterful that you must go back and analyze, and when we mention the name Kyrie Irving, I'm sure there's many mesmerizing performances you can think of. Despite all the outside noise that has surrounded Kyrie, us as basketball fans all know that he is one of the best players to ever step foot on the hardwood, just showcasing his high level skills through 13 seasons in the NBA. If we were all to hop in a time traveling machine and go back to the 2014-15 NBA season, we all witnessed a masterclass performance from Kyrie Irving vs Spurs that was truly thrilling to watch. At just 22 years old, Kyrie put up 57 points on 62% shooting from the field and 100% from deep going 7 for 7. Yeah, to say the least, he was on fire. But how exactly did he pick apart this San Antonio defense? Well, to start off the game, we see Kyrie give the ball to Kevin Love to then run off the screen from Mozgov, and once catching this pass, he now possesses a threat to score inside due to his high level driving skills. So this makes Parker be ready for the drive instead of this abrupt step back, opening up all this space for Irving to nail the jumper. Now with him showing defenses that that jumper is preheated and ready to go, this will cause Danny Green to close out hard after LeBron sinks the defense and also because Kyrie shot 41% from deep this season. So now Irving can attack that closeout hard blowing right past Green and before he runs into the defense down low waiting on him, here's where that floater will be useful later on although he misses this one. Since Kai has that ability to score at all three levels, you'll see defenders first get up high on the screen so they don't give up the three ball, and you also see the big hedge hard to slow him down on the attack, but since Kyrie takes a wider angle on the pursuit, he's able to avoid any friction from Boris D out, and knowing that Tony Parker will try to tip the ball out from behind, Irving throws the ball out in front to then cross into the middle of the paint, and I know I said later on we would see the floater come in handy, but here's where we see it work to perfection with that left hand. All night long, the Spurs defense couldn't stop Kyrie from getting two feet in the paint, and even if they were to stay in front of him giving him that contact, his focus was just unreal as he knocked down his floater while drifting away from the basket. Tough shots like that are second nature to Kyrie, and to get that space from Parker this time, he knows Dia will hit hard on the screen like the last time, so instead of pushing right, he sells the screen with this smooth crossover that not only breaks off Tony Parker, but it buckles the ankles of Dia as well. So now with a clear lane to attack, Irving has one man to beat in Tiago's splitter, so he could go towards the right and either complete the layup or find the big man rolling to the rim. But hey, who are we kidding? We know Kyrie is the master at taking and making tough shots, so he instead euros to the left, which makes splitter have to open up his hips giving Irving an opening at the rim and here's where the best left hand finisher in the league can show his magic. That handle of Kyrie's was on display all night and right here's where we get to see every move in the bag as Irving first used that half spin to bait Bellinelli into getting over the screen to only then snatch him hard with his crossover. Now with Splitter as the only man to beat to get downhill, Kyrie could choose to attack this left side but he still have to worry about Thiago Splitter on his trail, so instead he shoots this gap quickly to slide right past the defense and with only Danny Green in his way to score, Irving can show him that class is in session with his left hand finish. There's honestly just too many ways Irving can use these screens so it can be tricky to stay attached as here he stays patient making sure that Tony Parker runs into Mozgov when using the screen for a second time and unlike that last play where he had Danny Green waiting on him inside, this time it's Tim Duncan standing in front but when you're dealing with an elite finisher like Irving, he can use that high placement layup with the left hand to spin this off the glass for 2 points. I know it may seem fairly simple at times, but with skilled players they understand how to be unpredictable, so although Irving uses the screen again to get downhill, he notices that Tim Duncan is waiting on him in perfect position this time to make this shot tough and that Ginobili is right on his hip as well. So what does Kyrie do? He uses his body and off arm to initiate some contact to get away from Ginobili and since Tim Duncan stays flat footed, this float over the top is easy money. To add on to that unpredictability, Kyrie will change paces when he's pushing towards the basket and if you're to let him get all the way to the paint, then you're really just hoping that he'll miss, but his wizardry is far more superior than your wishful thinking. Just to get another look at this gear shift, you'll notice Irving burst out the dribble on the attack, but hold on one second, why did he choose to do it right there? Well if we rewind it, you'll notice that Irving retreats to make Kawhi come out and right when Leonard steps up, that's when Kyrie Irving chooses to burst out the handle and then he'll add in a slight hesitation to slow Kawhi down before attacking downhill. Now right here is where a lot of things could happen. Kyrie could potentially split the defense by pushing to the middle of the floor and then get into a shot. He could also dish it out to Shumpert since Tony Parker decided to help off, but take a wild guess as to what Kyrie does. No cheating, drop a comment. Okay 3, 2, 1. He immediately gathers into a floater drawing the foul, and hey, I'll let you hear it. 51, 51 for Kyrie Irving. Wow, what a show. Yeah, that bucket right there was tough, and this gave Kyrie Irving 51 points, and all night he was just causing the defense a ton of problems when getting to the rim, as they just couldn't figure out a way to stop him from getting where he wanted. 
As we pointed out earlier, Kyrie did go 100% from deep, and it wasn't just easy looks either. Since he was cooking the defense off these screens to go get buckets inside, Tim Duncan is going to play in drop coverage to take that away, and also because he's way too slow to blitz Irving without getting beat. But this here can cause many problems because Irving is no slouch when it comes to shooting from behind the line, and the pull up over the top is straight cash. We would see the screen action initiated a lot with Irving during the course of this game, and it truly didn't matter if his man was right on his hit when coming off, because if that help defender isn't right there to stop him from getting his shot off, well he's gonna let it fly for what should have been an and one. Just like those drives, Irving will use the screens like a mini game the defenders have to beat, so when Parker goes under the screen, Kyrie crosses right back over to get back to the top of the key, and by this time, it's just poetry in motion right over the top. All night long, the Spurs will show different looks at Irving to make it harder for him to get to his spots, but with every part of his game posing a threat to the defense, this crossover rejecting the screen makes Danny Green bite hard simply because he tried to get over the screen early to stay connected, but all it takes is for you to be out of place for just a split second, and now you're left watching the ball fall through the basket. Trust me, it was just a walking nightmare for defenders because LeBron had 31 points himself, so that's why you see the entire defense locked in on him. But this right here is a major mistake because on this backside, Kevin Love is setting a screen for Irving to run off. So when Kyrie catches with momentum going towards the left, he makes DL have to close out hard, but he's not coordinated enough to stop on a dime and stay with Irving on this crossover. And at this point, the confidence is truly off the charts on this pull-up from the wing. Now I want you all to do something right now. Look at the clock on this play. It's 33 seconds left in the game and the Cavs are down six. Now you don't necessarily need a three yet, but it would be major if you could get one. So what happens next? Well, this is where you call on number two, who has had that hot hand all night, and it didn't matter that Danny Green was riding his grill in the corner, Irving elevated right over him to drain the jumper to cut the lead down to just three points. Now, I know it may seem like that was probably the most clutch and ridiculous shot, but nah, look at the clock once again. There's only three seconds left in the game where Irving catches here, and with the slight hezzy into a one dribble pull, Irving rises up over an elite defender in Kawhi Leonard, and let's sit back and watch this masterpiece. With the defense keyed in on him all night, it would open up these lobs to his guys for easy buckets. When defenders got confused on switches with him in that pick and roll action, he could thread a nasty pass to LeBron for the slam. And with that soul crushing handle and court navigation, he could collapse the defense with ease. And now this dump off to Tristan Thompson makes for an easy bucket inside. This outing right here was truly a masterclass of elite offense and a high level of focus all night long from Kyrie Irving. When you go back and analyze these games, you can see just how surgical guys are, and in this case, Kyrie Irving, and from a 22 year old, this was truly an amazing performance. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you're first to know when I upload. I thank you all for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.